Welcome to the Wise Podcast, hosted by me, Kate Conway, and kindly sponsored by ID Verde. They are the UK and Europe's leading provider of grounds, maintenance services and landscape creation projects. They actively engage with social enterprises to build them into their supply chain. This week, I am very excited to say I'll be chatting to Jackie Pope from GLL and Better Belfast. So Jackie, you work for uh, a social enterprise that I frequent. Uh, and I, to be honest, it was one of the things that I missed most about um, over lockdown. Obviously lockdown was terrible, a lot of things happened, but I really missed going to uh, the gym, not when I say gym, I mean spa, in the uh, Olympia Leisure Centre. Because obviously leisure centres were closed, um, you know, for, for what, a year and a bit? Yeah. yeah, so let, let's take it back to the start though. So GLL, your job title is? Head of Service. Head of Service for GLL, which is Greenwich? Leisure Limited. Leisure Limited. And I hadn't realised this until I got involved with, um, well actually until Amanda told me several times that you guys are a social enterprise. So you run all the leisure provision for Belfast City Council, what would have been in the past the Robinson Centre, the Olympia, etc. You guys took... Yeah. Um, control of those. Yeah. So we came over um, and the first phase of the, the transition would have been the, you know, the partnership form and um, with Belfast City Council, Kate. And then we went through a whole uh, le a service modernisation. So looking at what um, they had existing and, um, and how we wanted to move it, um, you know, moving forward. Um, and that has happened over several years that we've been here now. And we're now I in the uh, probably going beyond the leisure transformation phase, which is all the um, amazing new leisure centres um, that you see. Which one of the first ones was Olympia, your favourite, mm -hmm. where our spa is uh, located, and I agree, it's a beautiful um, sanctuary in there. Um, so that was the leisure transformation, and we've just recently, um, as the as the more recent phase of it, um, opened Lisnashara, Brook, and Anderson's Town. Um, and then there'll be further phases of that. We have Avenil um, reopening just around the corner. And then we have uh, Templemore Baths, which is absolutely, honestly, that's going to be so I didn't amazing. know you were taking that. Because it's one of the old style, Victorian style yeah. Victorian baths. baths. Um, we had a site visit there uh, last week. And honestly, I am so excited. They're all amazing, the new centres. And, but this one just has that real... Um, you know, I suppose twist of history in it and, and so much and that's going to be an amazing destination too so really excited about that and then there's lots of plans again down um, down the line as well so um, absolutely lockdown and, and COVID has had a massive impact um, on so many people but you know the focus now is building back and building back better um, and supporting people um, you know through the journey over the next so many years but these new centres will definitely play a massive part um, in terms of what they have to offer. I think um, because whenever Olympia reopened, what year was that? But 2016, 17? Yes. So we came here 2015 and then that was the service modernisation phase, that first phase and Olympia was part of that um, phase. Yeah, yeah so um, at the time I was, I was on the radio with Stephen Clements and we did the show from the yes. centre. It must have just been sort of like to talk about it reopening. And I was in I was like, because I remember Olympia, I was, was a fan of Olympia, yeah. you know, um, over the years. But then I went back in and I was like, and then, so I suppose at that stage, in my mind's eye, a private company had come in to do this, you know, because it was so fancy and mm -hmm. so, and especially with the spa, which is on a par, if not better than most hotel spas, because of the private thermal suite part of it. I was really, so it blows my mind now thinking, yes, well, this is a social enterprise. But now that my understanding of social enterprise has, um, uh, improved thanks to Social Enterprise NI, in particular Amanda, of course. Um, and I understand that the Social Enterprise is the same as any other business. Your expectations are the same as any other business. The difference is what they do with the profit. Yeah. And you guys, I think, are definitely sort of um, a beacon for that in terms of going, oh, this leisure centre is amazing, yeah. you know, and that the service is so, so good. Um, especially, as you say, you know, you've, you've redone Anderson's Town where there's the surf yeah, and slides. Surf, uh, surf Belfast. Yeah, and it's one. It's the only one in Ireland, is it? That, that machine? No, not or? Surf. The Drop Slide, the Abyss, is the only one in Ireland. 
Um, and we have to get you up there to try that out. Oh, uh, just give me the keys. I'll yeah. be there. I've been. Um, yeah. That's amazing. We we did some testing over the weekend and and staff and. Um, that is without doubt going to be a tourist attraction um, for people coming outside of from outside of Belfast in, um, which is brilliant, you know, and, and uh, great for Northern Ireland, you know, and and the island of Ireland too, you know, so that we can absolutely um, have something like that, um, you know, that will attract people from all over for sure. Um, but what you were saying there about Olympia, I mean, we're extremely fortunate to have to be working in partnership with Belfast City Council um, because without doubt the investment they are putting into leisure, you know, it's part of a £105 million investment and, you know, GLL, um, for us to be having that opportunity to work with the council on that development um, as their sort of, you know, intelligent client and strategic operating partner and it's been brilliant just seeing them you know seeing the plans and then watching them come to fruition you know building the teams that go in that will operate them day to day and there is nothing and still now even though you know you're doing it all the time when I go down the Windsor way and see the big Olympia sign you get that wow factor every single time um, I love it and I just think wow this is amazing for a city to have something like this never mind all the other centres that it has around the city as well you know so it definitely I mean, has that. I, I have to be honest and say that the only part of it I have used is the spa. I'm very biased I love a steam room I love, I love the hot tub all of that and then um, the the massages and all the different treatments and things are all because it's a is it S is it Elmas or Elmas? It's yeah. an Elmas yeah, spa. Yeah. So it's the same kind of um, sort of massage services treatments as you would expect in a, in one of the leading hotels. But the price is yeah, much no, more accessible. It, much it's more amazing, affordable. and it is that we we call that spa experience. That that's what we call it, and it is if you have a bit, and especially more than ever now, you know that sort of holistic approach that absolutely you go and do your health and fitness and you have the gym or you have the swim or you have the grip exercise. But then to have that um, opportunity then to go and just relax and, and have some downtime um, it, all under the one roof is amazing, you know. So um, we'll have to change that. That's the only part of that that you've used. I know. Well, that's what I was going to say. That's where I was going with that. I was like, I know, I know obviously there's the pool, but there's the classes and yeah. but there's so much more because um, what you do with the, as I said, in terms of social enterprises, what you do with the profit is different from if this was um, one of the other sort of like leading brand gyms mm -hmm. because the money goes back into the community. Yeah, everything gets reinvested that. back in. So whether that's through, um, you know, the centres themselves or our people, our people are a huge part of who we are and, and what we do. And, you know, I'm extremely proud of the team that we have here in Belfast and the wider GLL and everyone's you know, that will to want to support communities and um, get people back and encourage people into better lifestyle changes and better health. So we're all extremely proud of that. And one of the things that we, you know, will constantly do is look at that investment into the team. So their training, their development and, and how they are. And it's brilliant when you see someone come in and they've started with us as a lifeguard and, and they're now, you know, fitness manager, service manager, general manager. And that's all part of that growth and, and development that's been reinvested back in um, to the teams, you know, and then... Well, just give me an example of some of the things that um, some of the, because there's obviously there's programs and different things in yeah. place that um, the the enterprise supports. Then, so to have like a social impact, what kind of things do you do? I mean, or ju just uh, talking even reflecting over the, the past year, or health team or health wise team, they they were initially when you know we were told shut everything down, and um, and the team went on furlough. And um, you know, we we looked at. The, the impact that that team could make if we brought them back. And absolutely delighted that we did because the, the team came back and not only did they massively impact, albeit sometimes through Zoom or when restrictions allowed through walking groups and, and anything that we could do within the restrictions, um, that team impacted on people um, you know, different ones. So there was cardiac rehab. So people who were already, already sorry, vulnerable um, or people that were having cancer treatment as part of the Move More 
programme and, and cancer rehab, you know, they were touching base with our team and the team were supporting them through, um, you know, that, that journey they were going through, not only with their history, but dealing with the lockdown then on top of that. And from May 2020 through to early this year, there was already over 8,000 interactions. And, you know, the team, you know, they were just so happy that they were able to impact on, on people who were already in, in challenging um, times with their health. So that's something that we're extremely proud of. Um, and as a result of the work that um, the team does across the city, they will be working closely um, on a trial, a post-COVID um, trial as well, um, you know, on how we get, you know, the long COVID and COVID patients back to better health. Okay. So all across the city, obviously, I, I've spoken a lot about Olympia, but all across the city, those programmes are operating in all of those different communities? Anywhere. It doesn't matter what part of the city you're from at all. Um, you know, you can contact the team. We also have, um, uh, you know, a jet, so the general, you, there's, there's the cardiac uh, rehab, cancer rehab, but there's also, you know, the physical activity um, referral scheme as well that will and, and majority of the referrals are mental health referrals Kate so um, it's really important that we recognize that especially post COVID and the teams will will support and when necessary signpost on to other support groups like the Samaritans um, so that's that's huge as well. So those are ones that have come through a doctor? Yeah. Okay, so, the, so people come to you and then what happens whenever you get one of those referrals? So the team will then contact the individual and they will then go on a 12-week program um, and sort of before COVID would have been in the centres and then we would hope by the end of the 12 weeks that they would continue on that journey where, you know, we all know that exercise is so important, not only in our physical health, but our mental health as well. Um, and that's hugely documented. So um, our hope is that people will continue on that for their, their health, um, you know, beyond the 12 weeks. And the team work really hard then, you know, to, to give the best service they can through that time. Um, and then they go on to hopefully a membership or, you know, their own uh, journey after that. Jackie, you know, I know you've, um because I know you personally, I know that you have other other different things um, going on in your life as well. And I know, you know, you've, you're obviously a very successful um, person. Why do you work in GLL? What's the, what is it that keeps you there? Because you could I, be working anywhere. I love what they do. I love their ethos. I love what they stand for. I worked in the private sector for many years, Kate, and I loved my job and the, and the teams I worked with. But when this opportunity with GLL came up and, the, and I looked into them and researched them, their social enterprise ethos is why. Because I see day in, day out what they do, what they want to still continue to do and beyond. So I, I, I love their ethos. I love that it's, you know, anything that's there gets reinvested back in. Um, you know, the company was formed in 1993 and their ethos has, you know, continued over so many years. And I'm just really proud to be part of that, you know, and I love it. Um, and we're always looking at, you know, absolutely, we've, we've done that and we've supported different communities and different people. But what, what more can we do? How can we help more people, um, you know, you know, day in, day out? What, how can you know, through us and the teams in the centres, how can we impact, you know, and that that, that social impact's um, really important. So you, I know you have, have the Belfast centres, but could you do that, you could do that for other councils, could you, like, would you expand out or? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. And we would love to do that. I mean, that's, um, we have had such an amazing journey so far in Belfast. Um, you know, with the number of uh, people participating, um, the usage within the centres, the products that we've grown, um, but also, you know, we want we want to move beyond Belfast um, as a business, and you know, we also in in England um, or in the UK and, and Wales operate libraries, children's centres. You know, leisure is a is a massive part of what we do, but um, you know, we also operate so much more than that as well. So, you know, it, it is 
you know, it's great for us and, and we're so delighted to be back and have the centres back open. And the one thing that really shines for me is that, you know, our children that through lockdown have had no school, no interaction with their friends. And when, you know, seeing the excitement on their faces when they're coming in, even when they see the pool through the glass doors, that pure excitement in their wee faces. I mean, that's priceless, you yeah. know, and we're contributing to that and we're, you know, our teams are... So to do that further and, you know, outside would absolutely be. But also bring in leisure, the leisure opportunities, as you say, like oh, the yeah, sort of no. one of a kind things to, to other parts of Northern Ireland. Yeah. So in terms of this, this podcast and people hearing it and then getting in touch with you, what kind of people um, are you, obviously, we, you know, we encourage people um, who can access the Belfast, you know, centres, go, go. Yeah. Um, but... Like what? Like, are you keen to link up with businesses or? Absolutely. I mean, that you know, we are. So, what we do, there's so many different arms to what we do that if anyone you know would like to get in touch, for sure, you know, um, get in touch, and we could certainly you know have conversations. We work as well with, and and it's something we're extremely proud of. Other social enterprises, um, you know, we work with, um, we have worked with. Um, the Now Group, we work with Orchardville at Grove, who offer an amazing service. Um, and That's the cafe, isn't yes, it? Yes, the cafe, yeah. and it's brilliant. And, you know, so we also love working with other social enterprises. Um, we will continue to strive to do that. Um, you know, one, as Belfast grows, but also, you know, there may be opportunity beyond um, Belfast in the future. And what about memberships? Um, can companies get in touch with you to get memberships for yeah, staff? Or? Absolutely. I mean, we would encourage anyone, if they haven't been to any of the centres, um, to come and you will see, so GLL um, or is, the, is the, obviously the company's name, but our customer facing brand is better. So you'll see the, the better um, uh, sign, you know, around the leisure centres. That's our customer facing brand. So you'll probably drive through it because all over the city now, um, you'll see, you know, we're back because we want people to come and use us. We want people to come and have that experience of, of you know, of who we are and what we do. Mm, I can't wait to go back. I, know. I have to say, <laughs> I'm really excited because honestly, it was one of the things I missed most. Um, over lockdown was just being able to go and sit in the hot tub and get into the steam room and just mm. completely chill. So I'm really glad the, the doors are open again. Jackie, thank you so much um, for sharing that with us today. And I'm looking forward to see what, what comes next. With I know. And definitely the drop slide. I'm, I won't lie. I'm nervous, but I'll do it for you. You'll do it. Okay. I know, I know you will. <laughs> I'll do it with you. I have. <laughs> yeah. Join me next time when I'll be chatting to Dr. Claire Cahy from Sensations. Thanks once more to Jackie Pope from GLL and Better Belfast and also to ID Verdi, our sponsor. If you're a social enterprise and you'd like to find out more about opportunities to work with ID Verdi, please contact Amanda at Social Enterprise NI.